they have a flag, but they do not have a nation. That's what the independence referendum was about. The billboards are still up, but the euphoria about the quest for independence in Iraqi Kurdistan has subsided. There is rising concern over isolation by Iraq and neighboring countries. We just entered Iraqi Kurdistan through Turkey, but the big question is just how long this border will remain open. The Turkish government says it could shut it at any time. They say they fear an independent Kurdish state could increase separatist tension in Turkey as well. Iraq's central government in Baghdad has cut international airlinks to Erbil, so it's not possible to fly there. Now, we have to drive to the capital city of the Kurdistan region. On the way, we come upon this market, which is usually buzzing. But clashes between Iraqi forces and Kurdish Peshmerga fighters since the referendum have kept people away. <laughs> A right to have a nation. What does that mean? We are about to meet someone who helped organize the referendum. Ari Mamshai. He invites us for Kurdish lunch to talk about his struggle for identity. This is a very typical Kurdish meal, right? Yaprach. What does it mean to you? It means our survival, it means our very culture um, and we have to protect it as we are protecting our self, physical being. Because without a food, we won't have a culture and without a culture, there won't be a Kurdish nation. During our conversation, Ari can't stop himself from following the news about the conflict, the fighting over territory and oil. For Ari, it's a story of being oppressed for generations. I learned to be Kurdish when I was in my mother's womb because her brother and her nephews were missing as part of the genocide. She was displaced when I was in her womb. That's when I have been um, inheriting the Kurdish identity. He tells me about his family being displaced during Saddam Hussein's rule, about the gas attack in the 80s against Kurds. Ari says he hates being called Iraqi. It's very offensive, it's very humiliating to hold a Kurd, uh, an Iraqi passport as a Kurdish people. I feel like I'm being humiliated every single time when I put it into my pocket or into my bag. Ari says he wants to fight for a Kurdish form of nationalism that is civic and inclusive of different ethnicities. Unlike the brand of nationalism in neighboring countries, he says. But is an independent Kurdish state the proper solution to more identity? Opinions vary. Yuwa Osman is an analyst of the Iraqi-Kurdish conflict. Like most people, he voted yes in the referendum. But with the conflict growing in Iraq, he now fears that Kurdish nationalism could be used in a negative sense. What we really fear is that this crisis turns Kurdish nationalism into something that can create problems between the people. This street was the street where everybody used to meet. Kurds, Arabs, Turkmen, everybody. They would come here for a meal. But uh, nowadays, since the crisis, less and less Arabs are coming. The question is how the Kurdish regional government will capitalize on growing nationalist sentiment. In the Middle East, the balance of power can change fast.